yeah, for those of you who are new to Minecraft speedrunning, today we're going to do a little showcase of what's going to happen next Saturday. Um, so basically in Minecraft, there, there is one main category that's very popular. It is called any percent glitchless random seeds. And within this category, there are three different subcategories depending on the version because there are lots of lots of Minecraft versions. Um, the first category is uh, 1.0 to 1.9 and uh, the next category is 1.9 to 1.15 and last but not least there's 1.16 and Vanen is now running theoretically um, very he theoretically said he didn't saw the countdown <laughs> no problem oh. though we're gonna just sync it on stream I, I'm confused because I'm looking at his inventory right now on uh, VLC, and I see a lot of items that I didn't see him grab, so I'm not really sure what happened uh, there. <laughs> Valen's stream going a little bit crazy. Um, it's okay. I'm just gonna bring uh, Boscar up to speed, and we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it. All right. Yeah, I I was talking with Valen. Uh, his OBS was uh, lagging a bit, so that's the reason why <laughs> there was uh, there were some frames missing. But it seems like it's. Uh, it's correct now. Um, Perfect. Yeah, we will we will see uh, who is gonna finish this race uh, first. Um, yeah, kind of kind of a bit of a scuffed moment at the start, but now everything is fine. Yeah. So first version that we're gonna feature today on stream is 1.7, which is one of the two main versions that people run in pre 1.9 any percent random seed glitchless. And uh, the most noticeable thing about this category is that in order for pearls, in order to get pearls, what runners do is to build a little tower that we're gonna see in the night. Cause um, in Minecraft, there's one big dragon in a dimension that is called the end. Maybe some of uh, you guys have seen it uh, if you ever played Minecraft. And in any percent, the final goal is to beat that dragon and jump into the end fountain that either spawns in 1.7 or is already there there in newer versions. So in order to reach the end, there are two items that runners need. The first item is pearls and the second item are blaze rods. And for the blaze rods, normally what runners have to do is to go to the nether, which is uh, kind of the underworld of Minecraft. And uh, we see already Boscar Videos, one of the best combined RC any percent uh, runners in the world, in the Netherlands at around, I would say, three minutes. But to be honest, I'm not that sure about that one, Saren. Yeah, yeah, around three minutes. I think that's going to be the theme of uh, the races, at least until we get into the next versions here. It's in 1.7. I'm really not sure uh, what exactly happened. I believe there's a desert temple involved. I did see a desert temple drop on uh, Boscar's side. Uh, Balin just kind of teleporting with all of the items in his inventory. So that is that's an interesting strat. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's a 1.7 strat or uh, you know maybe you could fill me in there. I can explain you everything about it. So um, desert pyramids are really really correct in every single Minecraft version, but in pre 1.9. They're kind of too good, so they had to nerf it in uh, future and uh, newer versions because you can get lots of iron, lots of gold, lots of diamonds, a little bit of food, even from those desert pyramids. And in this particular case, we see Boscar videos with the main weapon in 1.7, which is the diamond sword. The diamond sword is very, very good because uh, you can just hit the blazes twice and kill them already. So um, yeah, Boscar got lots of things from the from the blazes and now he's doing a strategy that is called blaze tnt so in your versions what runners do a lot is um they explode the blocks around surrounding the spawner with uh, bats because that increase increases the rates of blazes spawning but in pre 1.9 this is a bit scuffed you can still do it with a <laughs> with a certain setup but honestly if you have TNT from a desert pyramid, you should just go for that. And that is what Boscar did in 1.7 right now. Also what we see is Valen in, on the other side, who is uh, also fighting blazes, not using TNT, and using a setup uh, that uh, got introduced by one of the previous world record holders in 1.7 C-School, who was uh, the person to be defeat um, a one year long 
world record that got established by Illumina once. Um, yeah, lots of lots of little details. So another thing that is very noticeable is that Boscar videos is gathering blocks with those TNT uh, blocks that he got from the Desert Pyramid in the Nether, exploding Nether brick. Because as I mentioned earlier, um, both runners will build a tower, and in order to build a tower, you know, you need some blocks. Obviously, you cannot like just put it there without anything. So Boscar exploded Netherrack and got its 128 blocks um, that he will use to gather up. And so yeah, they are gonna abuse a mechanic that uh, exists in Minecraft that despawn mobs if you are 128 blocks away from them. So they're gonna use a strategy where they build a tower that is 128 blocks high and then they're just gonna um, kill some endermen on the grounds using uh, AI manipulation. And then once they killed all the endermen available, they're just gonna die and spawn on the top of the tower and repeat that cycle that many times until they got enough pearls. And the uh, exact number of pearls that you wanna have is 14 or more. I hope that answer your, answers your question, Saren. <laughs> Yeah, it does. I mean, I've, I've done quite a bit of 1.16 speedrunning. I'm I'm still kind of a noob, but I'm not like an Omega noob. But in 1.7, I mean, pretty much all of my experience comes from uh, watching your stream. Just 1.9, pre 1.9 in general, I am kind of kind of lost here. I know you build a tower, and now I know exactly why. Um, and I mean, the the TNT blocks. I remember back in the first the first time I ever saw you commentating. I think you talked about TNT blocks more than anybody else. You were very very upset. Nobody was using the TNT blocks, and now I know why, because everybody in pre-1.9 is always using the TNT. Uh, you're getting a lot of desert pyramids, and the TNT comes in so much handy, especially with uh, needing all those blocks. You know, we will also feature more TNT in 1.14, which is going to be the split that we're going to see later. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to gonna say anything more about that until we reach that split. Um, Boscar is now starting to build a tower. He's going to use a design that is called One Block Tower. And uh, the funny thing about it is that it says one block, but actually you need 128, as I said. But yeah, you might ask, why do people call it One Block Tower? Well, underground, this was a thing that uh, was found very, very recently, even though this is the any percent category that uh, exists the longest. There's one particular block that you might have seen. If not, uh, maybe you can... Uh, see it later. Valen is gonna build the same tower. He's gonna place that block very soon. I think you can see it there. It's on the lower left on the screen, now on the lower right. There's one single block of leaves and that block is amazing because that little thing makes the enderman go straight straight into the hole and just jump into death. It is amazing. It's beautiful. You, you will see it in a while. So why do, wait, why do they go straight into the hole because that block is there? It is. It has to do with uh, AI manipulation. So Endermen do think that actually it is a staircase and not a block. So <laughs> they will try to reach you using that block and uh, they will recalculate their pathfinding and uh, it, it's, it, it ends up to be exactly into the hole. So the Endermen think they will reach you if they jump right into the hole, but then at one point they will find out that that's not true and then they will just die due to gravity. Very, very sad. And we see we see one of the, if not the person, the main developer of this tower in chat, Chaos. Holy cow. You just have to build a tower somewhere on Twitch and this guy <laughs> just appears in your chat. It's amazing. He's got some uh, epic power senses for sure. I remember when I first started playing Minecraft and I found out you could just jump and place a block under your feet. I thought I was literally God. Very strange game mechanic, but uh, I'm glad it still exists. Definitely makes the game a lot yeah, more towers, interesting. Towers are that correct that um, the Japanese speedrunning community, that was the speedrunning community that run this uh, version the longest, and also the community that run Minecraft any percent glitchless, the first uh, and the longest, they just straight ban towers. They don't like to run towers. They, they say it's cheating. <laughs> they don't <laughs> wow. like it. <laughs> yeah, they say it's that powerful that they, they don't want to use it. So they just run around in hardcore, by the way. Uh, not using F3 at all and killing Enderman with their with their own hands. It's it's amazing. That's pretty powerful stuff. It is powerful. Well, so both runners are that good in a pace that they cannot even sleep. So um, they are 
getting some flints because they will have some they they want to have some arrows for the end fight there are lots of crystals lots of towers in 1.7 so they want to have uh, some arrows and in order to get arrows they need flints and they also need some chicken uh luckily i know that they are chicken at spawn don't ask me why but i know they are chicken at spawn and um yeah so both of the the uh both of them use their time to gather some flint, destroying gravel. And now they're building down 45 blocks deep, which is exactly the amount that the Enderman needs to die. And then they will just kill themselves in the game using fire. And then the hunting process uh, starts, which is the most relaxing part of 1.7. 1.7 first day is one of the most stressful, if not the most stressful, uh, split in any of the any percent uh, RSG uh versions in minecraft but now that it is over the runners can kind of chill and just look around and try to kill enderman yeah i'm not gonna lie every time i see someone dropping down on these towers i i just get super like anxious <laughs> like if i if i was playing this right now i would somehow find a way to die by like hitting can you like die hitting the top of the ladder or does it just catch you you can die and you can see it it happened right now on oh, my side yeah Boscar's setup is uh, considered to be a little bit faster. Uh, I don't know ex the exact math that is involved about it, but I know there is lots of optimizations with this tower. Uh, it is already a very powerful tower, but there are like still minor details that you can do. One thing is the thing that Kyle's just pointed out in chat. There's a thing called bed warp. Uh, it's way too dang. I'm not going to explain this on stream. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, it makes you teleport from the bottom to the top of the tower if you place your bed very precisely. Um, and you can use that as well. Yeah, so I haven't been keeping score exactly here. How many uh, Endermen have we seen even drop into the hole? I know Valen had one. It seemed like he died. I'm not sure if he got into the hole or not. But it looks like we've got quite a few on Boscar's side at least. Yeah, it's hard to hard to say. Um, another thing to notice is that I provided uh, a mod. I didn't develop this. It was developed by the pre 1.9 and the mod community. Uh, one of them, some of them are also very good speedrunners. Can just name one. Uh, some of the names: Pigs for Me, Mariners Fan, uh, Sharpie. They developed a, a mod. It's called Race Mods for pre 1.9 tournaments, and they allow you to use it. Uh, we are using it right now, and this mod is very good because it standardizes lots of things um, that otherwise would make a race a little bit unfair. And one of the things are blaze rod drops that runners already got from the nether. So uh, the same amount of blazes will give you the same amount of rods. And the other thing are ender pearl raids, uh, which means uh, you need to kill the same amount of endermen to get the same amount of ender pearls. Um, otherwise, the the game would be just too unfair. Uh, which, by the way, is hard to manage as a tournament organizer in Minecraft. Every single word <laughs> in Minecraft is random and different. There's so many RNG factors. Like, is it raining or not? Is like this mob spawning in that specific spot? Is like this mob deciding to shoot a fireball at this given moment those things are not manageable anymore but at least some of the things like drop rates and loot and uh, stuff like that we can we can regulate with mods or data packs yeah definitely i mean there's there's so many things in minecraft the entire game is like built around like a unique experience for every user like totally random worlds totally random everything um Keeping everything equal is going to be really, really hard, but at least we have pretty good ability to do most of that. The world files are exactly the same, like you're saying, the drop rates. Really important stuff getting standardized here. And I believe the uh, the Ender Dragon fight, uh, the perches are all standardized as well. I think it's, what do we grant, three minutes? Or was it four? Uh, not, I don't know anymore, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Some see, amount of minutes. We see Valen is uh, close to, to our timer though. On the top right, it says on his timer mod, 15 minutes 25, and we are on 15 minutes 35. So I think we are decently close. <laughs> so yeah, um, today it's uh, it's hard to hard to uh, schedule this thing because we have six runners, two commentators, 
and uh, lots of stuff happening at the same time. Um, but on Saturday, um, if this already amazes you, this is a relay race. After these runners, uh, their teammates are going to start run. We have some of the best speedrunners in the world competing on, uh, in, on Saturday for the crown in the Minecraft tri Triathlon Showcase um, tournaments. They're going to run on their own and they're going to complete all three versions alone without any help, without any team backseating, without any team member playing other, other split that they might play better. They're going to play every single version alone. And those runners that uh, complete the world's the, fa the fastest are going to win, which is a... Which amazes me because it's the first time that anyone tries to attempt uh, doing this. And I'm very happy that's going to happen here on CCG. Same. I'm excited. This Primer event's going to be very poggers alone. But yeah, like you're saying, the event on Saturday is going to be kind of a real treat. We're going to have a ton of runners. I think we have like 30 plus people signed up now or something like that. It's at least in the 20s of people who are, you know, prepped and ready to run every single version of the main three at least. At a really high level, so that's going to be sick to watch. Full tournament going on in one day. As uh, Valence is having some issues with some spiders here, but dispatching them pretty easily. Oscar's just like collected these Endermen right now. Like I, I keep seeing them just dropping down in the holes, but it looks like Valen might be uh, done collecting eyes here. Yeah, uh, Valence or Valen seems to be uh, done with uh, pearls, and it seems like he's ready to go to the strongholds. Uh, one noticeable thing about 1.7 is that in difference to newer versions, the eye points directly to the portal room in the strongholds. The stronghold is a structure in the overworlds where a uh, given portal will bring you to the end. And in 1.7, the eye points directly to the portal room, while in newer versions it points to the starter staircase and you will have to navigate the stronghold, which is a big, big labyrinth. Uh, and you, I, you trust me, you don't want to navigate it. It's just painful. Don't. Don't do it. <laughs> but uh, luckily in 1.7, they don't have to do it. And so, yeah, uh, about the points, about the runners on Saturday, we have so many good runners. We have very, very experienced runners. We have uh, lots of uh, world record holders, former world record holders of given uh, categories. We have uh, almost every single runner of the top 10 combined, I think. So it's going to be very hard. Not everyone is going to make it to the finals. Uh, I already apologize for that, but yeah, it's going to be very tough and very exciting. Yeah, I mean, Stronghold Navigation, I mean, well, come on, you don't like it when you drop into a Stronghold and you're like, oh boy, I hope it's straight down middle, then you run down middle and there's like a big ravine and then there's just a lava pool and you don't know which way to go and there's no doors. It's a good time. But my favorite part about running 1.16, honestly. Yeah, one thing that helps a lot is the use of the pie chart that we can see on the screen right now on both runners. Well, Boscar just closed step three. Uh, Minecraft, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, in my personal opinion, has a feature that is called the debug screen or F3 menu. And uh, those random numbers or lots of numbers that you currently can see on screen, this weird graph on the lower right, those things was uh, meant for, were meant for debugging the game. And Notch, the designer of the game, just decided to leave it there uh, <laughs> for whatever reason. I don't know. <laughs> so speedrunners, you know, they like to use glitches. They, they like to use whatever they have in their in their possession. And they use those tools um, to um, find out more about the worlds that they have never seen before. These worlds, both runners are playing the same world, but both of the runners have never, ever seen those worlds before. So everything is new to them. And one thing that they can uh, use is the pie charts. Uh, in the pie chart, lots of things appear, like if there's a chest close, if there's a spawner close, if there are uh, invisible block close or whatever. And using that uh, information, you can uh, determine where potentially the stronghold could be. And Valen already used this technique, uh, and also used the thing that is called triangulation to uh, potentially dig now into the stronghold. So we will see yep. if uh, he... Oh, and he gets it. There we go. Yeah, conveniently straight into the portal room, as you said. So no fussing about with the stronghold. First one to enter in. And I believe starting a little bit late too. So uh, actually taking a bit of a lead here for his team. Kind of sick. Kind of playing like a nut. And uh, the end fight a little bit different from uh, what I'm used to at least. Uh, 
Dragon obviously not having that center area to perch on makes it a little bit odd. The tower is spawning in all sorts of different directions. 3.9 ends are very strange to me. Yeah, the tower that's the towers that spawn are completely random every time you enter the ends. Uh, I made sure that both runners will get the same amount of towers so that it is fair. Um, but you can get rolled. Sometimes you can get New York City, literally, in the ends with lots of towers. Oh, this is another thing. Um, if you spawn on a box, like Valen just did, sometimes the dragon just... Like, there's a 50-50% chance oh. that the dragon just at the beginning <laughs> directly charges you. There he is, yeah. <laughs> I think that could happen and in newer no versions too, can it? In newer versions, it cannot charge you right at the beginning. It can oh, okay. uh, charge you once it's uh, landed in the middle. But ah. uh, yeah, in pre-1.9, there's no fountain whatsoever. So the dragon just will randomly charge at you. And um, there has been some new tech developed as well to uh, beat the dragon faster. There's a thing called Chaos Tech by some random dude that was here in the chat before. Smile. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, random. basically you can um, just explode a bat to give some damage to the dragon. And then you can... Um, that's hard to explain. You can uh, walk away from the bat and uh, if your position to the hitbox and to the bed explosion is um, is good enough, there is a 50% chance that the dragon will charge you again so that you can explode another bed and cause more damage to the dragon. Um, Valen, I have to say, for not having played 1.7 for a long time, is playing very well. He's uh, shooting almost every single crystal very, very quickly. And okay, now he's having trouble with that one, commentary curse. But uh, yeah, very, very nice. Also. Doing a little bit, I think that was a decent amount of damage with the first bet. Let's see if the second one does more. I have to say that one was not that great, but he has a ton of bets from the Desert Pyramid, so I believe he will be able to beat the game. Also, boss care thing isn't a strong already. Yeah, I'm not sure what we went to the library for. Perhaps some string to get a bow, question mark? Yeah, he, he needs that bow. I think he was not able to kill spiders. So he went to the library to get some string and is now able to enter the end. Boscar, I think last year, was considered to be able to beat the world record um, when it was not that low. Uh, now he doesn't play this category anymore. And I don't think he wants to get world record in this category. But um, yeah, he's very good in any, any of the three categories. And yeah, Valen just finished, entered the fountain and completed 1.7 in less than 25 minutes, which is huge. And now the next runner is Tukada, who's going to run 1.14. And we have another Desert Pyramid. Who, who would have thought about that? <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Desert Pyramids uh, today and probably throughout the event on Saturday. As uh, Boscar has entered the jet engine area where uh, this giant plane is apparently flying overhead, as described by T-Wags. Um really don't understand why the, the dragon has to be quite so loud. I guess it's a pretty formidable opponent, opponent so. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of different things and uh, details when it comes to uh, 1.7 and 1.14 uh, that uh, lots of people are not that familiar with because I think the most uh, popular RSG any person's uh, category um, that uh, went to, uh, yeah, went for to a broader audience was 1.16, I would say. Um, so most of people are familiar with that, with bastions and oh, that bed is a little bit weird. Oh, it's gonna get destroyed by the dragon, right? Nah, it's still there. But uh, for example, this these end fights, I don't think lots of people have ever seen these type of ends in 1.7, for example, or they have seen people trading with villagers in 1.14. So. Uh, I hope the events today and the events on Saturday is gonna showcase a bit what exists in uh, in terms of Minecraft speedrunning because there's lots of stuff to do and this is just any percent. There's also a category that's called All Advancements, which is kind of the 100% category of Minecraft, and that one is even more way to think. Um, I think maybe we want to feature one of those showcases as well on the channel. What do you think, Saren? Yeah, I think that'd be dope. All advancements is kind of scary, I'm not gonna lie. I, I go into a stream and I see all those advancements flying by on the screen. I have no clue what's going on. I just like wait for the chat to tell us what the objective is currently and then I get hyped on whatever that is. Whether it be uh, collecting cats <laughs> or finding a biome 
but yeah, pretty pretty much way over my head. Um, as is uh, pretty much both these categories here. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, 1.14, how it differs from 1.7? Because obviously, doing a little bit different stuff here at the start here on the side of uh, Tukara. Sure. So 1.14 um, was first split from pre-1.9 because originally, uh, moderators thought, the struggle is just way too far. It doesn't make sense to compete with pre-1.9 because um, the strongholds in 1.14 spawn like twice as far or even further than in pre-1.9 most of the times. So people just thought that uh, it would have been a good idea to split it. Also the end fight will look way different. There's going to be a fountain in the middle and the towers will always spawn in a circular, circular uh, motif. Uh, Boskar just killed the dragon, by the way. Still a very good time. Uh, even though Valen clearly won against Boskar, which amazes me, to be honest. Um, that was that was, was a huge accomplishment by by the underdog, Valen, here. So Circuit so is also going to start 1.14. And yeah, in this category, inst uh, instead, uh, you're not going to kill Enderman. You're not going to build towers. You're not going to do any of that. You're not going to do hunting. Uh, you, you shouldn't do that. Um, to be honest, you can do it. You, you shouldn't do, do it, though. What you're going to do instead is you're going to trade with villagers because there's one trait that the cleric, which is one of the professions of the villagers, gives you, which is the enderpearl trait. So there is no need to kill endermen anymore. There's just need to get enough emeralds, which is the Minecraft currency, uh, or gold, in order to trade with the cleric and get pearls. And uh, you might ask, well, how do I get so many emeralds? And... Uh, in a very short amount of time. So there's another villager. Uh, his prof oh, their, their profession is Fletcher. And one of the first traits that the Fletcher gives you are sticks. And uh, one of the most noticeable things that people do in 1.14 specifically, there are other strategies, but one oh. thing is, oh my God, Sergei, they just got killed by the golem. Um, they're going to explode either a dark oak, which is the forest that you can see on the left side on the screen by, uh, from Sergei. Or they're going to explode a sub village, a savannah village, in order to get enough wood to trade the wood in form of sticks with fletchers, and then the emeralds that they got from that with a cleric in order to get pearls. And yeah, that's basically it. Oh, that's it? <laughs> I, I have my notes out, don't worry. Don't worry, Reddy. I have it, I have it all planned out. My runs are coming later tonight. I, I have watched a little bit of both these categories, so I'm not completely lost, but I appreciate you filling in the chat because I would not be able to do nearly as good a job. Um, trading with villagers, that's about as far as you would have gotten with my explanation. Um, but yeah, obviously not the greatest start there, dying to the Iron Golem, but not a huge deal. Uh, obviously not spawning too far away from the village. This is a tournament seed after all. Most things are going to be pretty much spoon-fed here. Um, as you see, Tukara already in the nether, finding the fortress, killing some blazes. Can't quite make out how many rods. I think we have three or... Yeah, three. So, gotta kill a few more here. Rates aren't doing too well for him. Yeah, not that good. Oh, I just see... Looking at Tukada, he got one of the best items in the game. It is a, a god apple. Some people call it notch apple as well. Or enchanted golden apple. It gives you fire resistance. So normally what people do in 1.14 is they craft the shields because they don't want to get hit by blazes. But if you have the very, very tiny chance of getting a god apple from a desert pyramid, um, you can use that god apple to get fire resistance, which is one of the enchantments uh, or um, effects in the game. Uh, and then just, uh, yeah, not get burned from the blazes, which is huge because then the blaze fight is considered to be way faster. What happened to, to, uh, to Kata's IGT timer? <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, I think that they just loaded up the world file and we're waiting for their time to start or the duration of the first race, so. Oh, I see. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. A sick, you know, 30 minutes already in the nether. Can't believe it. Oh, it's also frozen. I didn't even notice that part. Come on, guess. All right. Yeah, so this is the strategy which is considered to be classic in uh, 1.14. Nowadays, there's another strategy that we might see on Saturday. It's called uh, ocean uh, strategy. There are lots of uh, different ways to use the ocean 
to also get ender pearls and one of the structures that uh, exists in the ocean that is the ocean monuments where, they, where they, there are eight gold blocks that you can also trade with villagers but today we're gonna just see the classic old school 1.14 strategy um which is just classic 1.14 uh, which is pretty nice, which by the way is also the, the version that I run the most. I run this for about, I don't know, one to two years. So 1.7, I would say I'm more of a newcomer compared to this. In this category, I, I can tell you every single thing. Like, I know everything about this. Master of the 1.15.14. I, I think you were mostly running 1.15 recently, wasn't it? Is that yes, for I got, something uh, specific? Yeah, I wanted to get a sub-20 and 1.15 and uh, no of 3 world records. Uh, I ended up almost getting it. Uh, there was a dude that had like a couple seconds faster than me, but didn't submit the run. But I thought for one day that I got the world record that was good enough for me. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'd say that's a completed goal. <laughs> yeah, that's completed. Um, yeah, and uh, in 1.15, people run this nowadays. You can, all, all the strategies that exist in 1.14, you basically can also do them in 1.15. With the difference that you have to know what you're doing. Because people ru uh, started running 1.14 because on the second day forwards, there's a thing that is called uh, infinite restocking glitch. So villagers will restock infinitely and keep trading with you. All the all the day they don't care until the trading time is over. In 1.15, this does not exist, so your trading route does uh, needs to be uh, has to be very very precise because if you do one trade wrong, your complete run is dead and you have to reset. Um, but if you play this game for a while, at some points, um, you you know your trading routes and this shouldn't happen to you. Got yeah yeah. Tukara exiting the Nether here. Blowing up some trees, like you were saying, uh, getting some wood for the trading. Um, I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be a uh, villager nearby that'll be perfect to trade with here, and we will get our uh, pearls all hooked up on our way to the stronghold. Yeah, 100%. Um, some random dudes uh, in CCG started looking around and collecting data packs and uh, writing some data packs to make sure that everything in these two categories 1.14 and 1.16 are 100% uh, per perfect i don't know who that was but uh, yeah i i trust them a bit so uh, i'm pretty sure everything is going to turn out well that is good to hear surely no uh, no data pack errors um never seen that in a tournament before definitely never made that error myself I gotta say, um, blowing up these trees like this gives me, like, mine Minecraft, like, stress, because when I'm playing, like, create, or not creative, a uh, survival, just like a casual survival world, if anybody ever leaves a tree, like, unchopped down, it just, like, pisses me off. If I come across a tree and somebody, like, chopped everything off, but, like, the first, the top one and there's just leaves hanging there, so unesthetic, ruins my mood, ruins my day, but you gotta do what you gotta do, you gotta do what's fast. Yeah, in 1.7, Minecraft speedrunning is a mean game. In 1.7, you must execute Enderman in order to achieve <laughs> to beat the game. In 1.14, uh, you either kidnap villagers or you explode their houses or you do deforestation. <laughs> and then you just abuse glitches to get uh, or, or bots oh. to get very cheap prizes. Oh, so the kid is about to die. Holy cow. Didn't see the Notch Chapel, I think. It's using a shield. I am terrified right now that... That blaze was getting kind of high up there. Obviously, the blazes can shoot over the shield. Um, it gets a little bit, a little bit sus, but managing to stay alive. One HP though, not a, not a good time. Yeah, to cut out, so having a little bit of frame issues here. Um, we have to say we connected right uh, from CCG Central to uh, Latin America to make sure that uh, today you can watch these amazing speedrunners. Sometimes some frames might be missing. We want to apologize for that, but uh, yeah. Uh, we have at least <laughs> so to get this on on the left side. But very flu fluid gameplay. Yeah, that's pretty much every every single speedrunning tournament ever is going to have some sort of frame droppage. Um, the miracle of my, my internet stays alive, honestly. Same. I'm supposed, yeah, to have, I'm supposed so, to have good internet. I'm living in Sweden. I've got fiber. Everybody always tells me how great the internet is in Sweden. I'm not really feeling it. I, I don't know if they've ever lived here, but 
Internet sucks Bro, everywhere. If, if someone ever told you that Germany has great internet, they're straight lying to you. Like, <laughs> don't come here. <laughs> internet is so bad. I only base the uh, countries I visit on uh, whether or not they have good internet. I don't care about the culture, or the food, or the music. None of that matters. Um, tourism is really unimportant. It's all about the internet connection. True, true gamers don't care. They only care oh. about the internet and their PC. Almost catching his boat wow, on Sergete. fire. Yeah, Sergete just used the boat to not uh, get gravity damage. But then the boat landed on fire, so they had to jump and to destroy it in the air. That was very nice. Dukara is playing on a very short amount of RD, probably because they have some problems with their PC or something. I don't know. <laughs> but it's working out. They're already trading with villagers. There we, there we see Tukara uh, trading with Fletchers. Oh, and Serkit is now visiting the pyramid. So that's why he didn't have the Notch Apple and oh. was almost about to die against the Blazes. Oh, there's so much gold as well in this pyramid. This is so good. I wonder why this pyramid is so good. Yeah, it must be just really lucky. I mean, I'm. Pretty sure these seeds are all random, right? Just random seeds, no data packs. Yeah, this is this is so lucky. Like the odds for this <laughs> are so low. <laughs> Alright, so Sergete has to sleep very soon, because if he doesn't sleep, he's gonna waste trading hours. And yeah, there we go, he's about to sleep right now. Um trading hours starts one minute and forty seconds after sleeping. And we'll finish uh, roughly six minutes after that. So there's one minute and 40 seconds that you will just lose, straight lose, if you don't sleep in time. Um, this is one of the big differences between 1.14, 15, uh, 1.7 uh, against 1.16. 1. Everything that is pre-1.16 is pretty much cycle-based, unless you do uh, a very way to dank strategy 1.8, which is trading. Um, but normally everything is cycle based and uh, this means that uh, most runners are pace locked until they slept um, or until the night time starts in 1.7. Uh, this is the case also in 1.14 where they have to sleep in order to continue with the trades. And if you just waste so much time and don't sleep in time, you're just gonna be one minute or two minutes behind your opponent and you don't wanna want that to happen neither in PB attempts or in a race. And Dukara here heading off to the stronghold has all the eyes of Ender he is going to need. Uh, allegedly, I would hope that uh, he gathered plenty. Although I only see six in the inventory. Hopefully there's a split. Okay, no, actually going to go back and trade some more. Okay, I lied. Just trying to figure out some information here first. Thought it was time to adventure off to the end, but not quite yet. Which is good for, uh, good for Team Europe because they're falling a little bit far behind here. 1.9 kind of kind of was a bop. This one looking like uh, Tukera is on a pretty solid pace as well. So regaining the lead is going to be a little bit difficult for our friends in Europe, but definitely still in it for sure. 1.16 can be a little bit uh, manka sometimes, depending on you know what happens in the Bastion. What happens? There's a lot of Nether time, right? And the Nether is kind of scary. There's a lot of lava, a lot of potential for death, losing your items, uh, resets. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens as we move forward here to the end of 1.14 and on into 1.16. Yeah, we're just about to start in about 10 minutes or something. These runners are so fast. I have to say, in Super Mario 64, 16 stars, there are people that run LBLJ and no LBJ, as you know. And one thing that I just noticed is that Tukara has a 2130 in 1.1415, but it is with ocean strats so this would be like lblj and uh there's no lblj to say so which is uh, classic <laughs> i think it's a 28 minute pb so it's not that far away from sergete by the way because i am pretty sure that 26 27 is uh, sergete san's classic pb putting it in terms i understand i like it yeah, bringing it to our fellow fellow speedrunners. I know that CCG at this uh, point has been very, very much populated by Mario speedrunners. But you know, guys, we're going to change this. We're going to bring more speedrunning communities to CCG. There's going to be lots of epic stuff here. I hope this is going to incentivize, uh, I don't know, uh, friendly uh, to each other in between speedrunning communities. That would be pretty cool, making a difference. 
I'm not gonna lie, probably one of my favorite part about running like a bunch of multiple community tournaments is seeing people from one tournament like join another tournament I would never expect. Like seeing someone like from a Mario 64 tournament joining an OOT tournament or even someone from like a Mario Odyssey tournament trying out Mario 64 for the first time. Um, it's really cool to see, even if they join and their PB is like extremely non-competitive and they don't make it out of qualifiers, like it's still to see, cool to see, uh, you know, cross community contamination, so to speak. Getting Dude, people I was watching to other games. one time uh, tournaments by Westdog. I think I taught, uh, talked about you this the other day. It was a 16 star championship, I think was the name. And I wanted to try out the game, so I was on a Discord call with other Minecraft speedrunners. And there's this AA uh, speedrunner, I think you know at this point, it's Wetsock Boy. Um, and one of the previous 1.15 world record holders, uh, Johans. And they saw me running Mario and they started running Mario as well. I got like a, I don't know, my PB is 23 minutes or something. Wetsock Boy has a 19 minutes, for example. Uh, Johans has a 21. And Duncan Runs, the guy that makes all the cool data packs, I think that guy has an 18 minutes uh, PB at this point. Dang, really? I didn't know that. That's yeah. sick. That's so cool. Alright, I'm sending Duncan the uh, invite to the next 16 star open. I think it's a little bit late to join this one, but sounds like we need him in the next one. Duncan is not only a good uh, mod developer and data pack uh, developer, or whatever he does with computers, it's just amazing. He is also very good at video games. If he would just grind more, I don't know, he would have top 10 in every single speed game that he want, wanted to play. I'm not biased at all uh, saying this, by the way. <coughs> <laughs> Dr. Y Blocks been coming in the chat saying that uh, the only thing that he's understood so far was the uh, 16 star analogy. So good, good call on that one. I, I like that one a lot. It definitely brought the Minecraft world down to my level. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, so there's one thing that was very debatable. And that we're not gonna see on Saturday, but today runners just agreed uh, to use um, because at this point they're used to use. It is called a calculator. And in 1.14 and 1.16, um, you can find the strongholds with only two eye throws if you measure it precisely using a calculator. So there was lots of debate about this because obviously it is an external tool and speedrunning, you normally don't want to use tools. You want to do everything on your own, mostly, unless it's like a very long category, like, I don't know, 100% Wind Waker or something. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there was a huge debate and the outcome was that at the end, calculators in any percent and in, uh, any per in uh, all advancements, they got allowed. And so you, we could see this uh, on Sergete San's site. He placed two blocks on the ground and throw an eye, and then pressed F3C, that copies his current uh, coordinates from the debug screen into his clipboard, and that got into a calculator that is not visible on screen right now, but uh, I'm pretty sure Sergete San has it on his second minute monitor, and that gives him an estimate where the stronghold might be. Yeah, it's definitely one of the oh, more... What was that? Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I hope this was not way too dang. <laughs> if something is too complicated that I'm explaining, uh, I know sometimes I can go a little bit too much into the details. Just call me out, yell at me, uh, kick me out of the commentary booth, whatever. <laughs> Fuck, um, yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. just kick you out and then I can talk about really interesting things like uh, someone getting in a boat or someone digging sand. I know how to call those things out, so... Get some in-depth commentary from me there. Uh, but what I was going to say is that it's, it's one of those interesting things about the Minecraft communities. There's like a ton of different categories you can run, right? There's different versions. There's sort of different rule sets, like different subsects of people. Um, some people play with F3 menus. Some people play with no F3. You've got the calculator versus the no calculator. And at the end of the day, you know, whatever gets allowed gets allowed. But you can still run the game however you want. And you can still compare yourself to whoever you want. Um... You know, there's all sorts of different unofficial leaderboards that track different things. Um, it's really cool to see just like what, what people prefer to do, what people uh, find more interesting. Yeah, totally agree with this. Um, I respect every single form of speedrunning, uh, also in Minecraft, uh, of course. And yeah, I personally don't use these tools and don't use with the three menu, for example, but all my friends uh, use it, and uh, I'm totally fine with this. I wouldn't call about records not being about records. 
uh, just because they used the calculator or something like that. People voted about it, and I'm also a big believer of democracy. So yeah, that was the outcome, and uh, now we have this thing in uh, any percent, which is totally fine. Um, Tukara now using another F3 uh, feature that is uh, Chunk Borders, and is digging down at exactly 4-4, or very close uh, to it, because the the star staircase uh, within the chunk will always generate in the 4-4 coordinate of this chunk. And there it is, the star staircase. Yeah, no portal room entry easy for these runners this time. They have to work for it. And uh, we'll see if the stronghold is nice. We'll see what the slideshow brings us. Hopefully some uh, nice frames. Hopefully no ravines. Or else we can uh, blame the tournament organizers, right? I think that's what they do in the MSL. I think we can do that here too. Yeah, always make sure to flame the seat finders and uh, the organizers and everyone except the referees, please, because those people are not me. Um, but yeah, <laughs> other than that, just make sure that, that, that flame all the organizers and stuff. Um, yeah, we, we take all the, the blemish. Um, zombies here blocking Dukara's way, no problem. We got plenty of food, 12 bread in the offhand. We're chilling. We found the portal room. Silverfish trying to take some chunks out of him. Hopefully not getting bopped into the lava. I saw a pretty unfortunate clip of somebody getting comboed out by Silverfish into a lava pool the other day on Twitter, and my heart broke a little bit. But uh, Dukara making it out here. Dukara is now in the ends. Entering at a very good pace. I think it is still sub-30. Uh, good runs at this point in Classic are considered to be sub-25. But sub-30 at the, at the beginning of this category what was considered to be like the Hail, Hail Grail or Holy Grail. Is that how you say it in English? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Holy Grail, right? There you go. Uh, three times is the charm. Um, yeah, and uh, sub-30 is still a very good time within uh, tournaments. Obviously nowadays you want to Especially in these tournaments, you want to have uh, a sub-25, but I can understand that this not always happens. And there's already a charge, a purge, oh I mean, goodness. from Tukada, who's doing no F3-1 cycling. Holy cow. Is he going to hit it, though? Easy. Nice. That is so clean. So normally you can use hitboxes to uh, one cycle a dragon very, very easy with bats. But Tukada is just not using it and still managed to beat the dragon. That was so cool. So, yeah, now the next runner for Team Latam is Tino, right? Yes, hopefully we can get uh, Tito online. I'm not sure where Tito's at. I'm not sure if I've got the right URL. I'm a little bit mock ass right now. Wait a minute. I'm going to send it to you. Um... It's okay. For now, we have a, a beautiful Minecraft intro screen. Very nice stuff. And we've got a Sergeta san. Is that how you pronounce it? Sergeta san. Uh, Sergi. Sergi is nice. Sergi okay. is okay. <laughs> Dude, I'm like, I'm like listening to you pronounce it. I'm like, there's no way I can say it like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no I'm, problem. I, I tried my best. <laughs> uh, but yeah, heading yeah, so through the stronghold here. He is uh, heading through the stronghold, looking for the portal room. As I said, uh, they cannot go directly to the uh, portal room. They will uh, find their way first to the starter staircase. So they have to navigate this uh, maze, which is called strongholds. And uh, there is a rule uh, that says that the portal room is most likely to generate four rooms away from the entrance. This is not always the case, but speedrunners uh, use this technique to find the portal room very quickly. And uh, Sekita san find, found it, but he's about to die because he's on very low health. And there's also a skeleton in the in the portal room. Now he's able to eat. And due to the fact that in plus 1.9, uh, there's farther, uh, faster saturation, he is completely fine. In 1.7, this would have been a death, I think. And also, we see Tino now in 1.16. There we go. Yeah, I'm finding a shipwreck early on, right underneath a ruined portal. I mean, this is uh, this is definitely a tournament seed. Um, let's see what the ru ruined portal really has to offer here. That does not look super completable, but I, I mean, we have enough lava. We can make our own portal frame here. 
Not a huge deal. Definitely will serve as an enter. Sergete here using two buckets to place Obsidian in the central fountain and have an easy one cycle. Tino trying to figure out how to build the portal. I'm sure he knows how to do it. Tino, by the way, is one of uh, the seed testers for Saturday. Uh, he has a 15 minutes 21, which is a very, very decent PB. Uh, Ava as well, who is going to run now after Sergete has a 16 minute uh, run. She's also very good at so 1.16. So this is going to be a very close match. Uh, I was expecting normally to uh, Team Latam to be the underdogs here. So I'm surprised that there is so much ahead from Team Europe. Yeah, they're kind of crushing it. Maybe having a little bit of a uh, chip on their shoulder, wanting to show off, wanting to uh, prove the doubters wrong. I don't know. I'm 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 liking what I'm seeing. That's all I can say. They're they're definitely playing cleanly. Sergete also with a bow here. I'm not sure what happens. It might have been something that went a little bit wrong for Sergete here. Still waiting for the dragon to purge. Um, Team Latam got a purge very very quickly. Sergete is still has still has to wait. Uh, luckily in the data pack there is a cap at four minutes. The dragon is forced to purge until that is a vanilla end fight. And talking about purges, there it is. Sergete by the way, one of the best one cyclers in the world. Let's see if he's, he's able to at least do a five bet. And it is a five bet indeed. There we go. Yeah, this guy is just considered to be very good at, at one cycling at all. It doesn't matter if it's F3, no F3, it doesn't matter if it's 1.14, 15, or 1. Point whatever. He just kills the dragon fast. Yeah, and now it is all up to Awa here. Drop it in. She's got a lot on her plate as Tino is already into the Bastion here. The bridge Bastion. We found the Chalice. And we'll see if uh, Awa can find this shipwreck in a good amount of time. Looking around, can't quite find it. I think we got, got a glimpse of it there. It's a little bit hidden, though. Yeah, it is, uh, it is hidden. Oh, Ava's doing mapless. Oh. She's looking around for a mapless treasure using the pie charts. Unfortunately, there's not treasure, but she's uh, finding the, the shipwreck now. Yeah, she didn't see it at the beginning, so she was thinking that there might be a treasure, but yeah. There's the, the shipwreck with all the iron. Very, very nice shipwreck. Going to the good part of the shipwreck where all the iron is. Also going to look for that treasure, maybe. I honestly think it's not worth it, but uh, yeah, it might be an idea. Using a pressure plate in order to be able to breathe underwater, uh, which is another technique that you can do in Minecraft, in plus 1.9 at least. And uh, then finally, she might go to the other part of the shipwreck where some food is. There we go. Let's see if there's food. And indeed, and also, oh there is a very small chance that TNT spawns in that chest. And guess what? We have two of the two TNT blocks right there. Reddy's favorite block, the TNT block, number one block in Minecraft. And uh, Melon listen, and chat bringing listen. up a very important point. There is a very interesting webcam on uh, Awa's screen showing off. Uh, she's got the moves. I mean, she's moving really fast. Is that, a, is that like a hand cam going on right now? It is uh, the hand cam indeed. Um, Ava also being a cool cat, uh, not, not only a speedrunner. Uh, considered to be very, very fast in every single speed game that she runs. She runs other stuff as well. Can't recall everything, but I know she likes to speedrun lots of games. So, yeah, true gamer here. Epic. Entering a little bit uh, later than Tino, though, because uh, due to the fact that she had to start later, it's going to look around, open the F3 menu, maybe, in order to find the Bastion, but guess what? It's not necessary because it's right there. I'm going to use one of the TNT blocks for blocks here, at least something that I like to see. There is a strategy to use it to explode the go blocks from the bridge, but not that many people are familiar with it. And also, I think this is a good opportunity to um, remember chat that Saren, our co-organizer co co here, uh, Saren also run 1.16 <laughs> at some point. Oh, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are you going to say? What, what, okay, <laughs> what is the significance of this? I got to know. There's no, there's no deeper <laughs> significance. I, I just reminded it. I don't know. I find it cool. So, yeah, I'm happy. <clears throat> Very epic. Yeah, not mining out that whole chalice. You don't need quite that much gold, but uh, we'll be off to the trading segment here as Dino is finding a fortress here. 
Like a little bit, a little bit like Liam has uh, started playing Minecraft. Wait, did Liam start playing Minecraft? Really? I mean, I'm seeing the feed over on Tino's side. It's looking like Tino's just uh, showing li Liam's screen right now. It's a it's a bandwidth joke. Ready? <laughs> Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I was so confused. Sorry. I was using all my brain power trying to understand that joke. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> Don't worry. We will, we, will, we, will, uh, we will have much better commentators than me on uh, Saturday. I think everybody will be very pleased with the, uh, the talent crew we have on board. More on that later. Yeah, epic commentators. Personally, some of my favorite commentators in the whole Minecraft community. I even brought the guy that didn't commentate for like two years, but I don't know when I heard him commentating the first time, I just knew that this guy has potential. <laughs> he is so good. All right, so Tino is fighting blazes, gonna use fire resistance to kill those blazes. Avare Fructus is still routing the Bastion. Uh, there are lots of different so Bastion routes uh, in. Bridges, there are not that many. There are like two main routes. She's going, I believe, for Dowski, um, who also ran Minecraft, by the way. Maybe some people still remember Dowski, uh, that guy that's got 1.16, 1.16, 16 star records, and I think at some point also one and zero star records. Is that true? That is true. Yes, Dowski's Dowski's a god gamer. Not many, not many people remember the uh, epic Fortnite grind that uh, Dowski went on, but there was one point where he just stopped playing. Uh, SM64 was just grinding Fortnite. He was pretty god gamer at that as well. Some people are just like good at every game. It's kind of crazy. Just incredibly competitive. They got the fast fingers or something. I'm not really sure. Yeah, so Dowski, if I remember, at some point was second place in this category, which is the most contested in one point uh, in Minecraft. Any percent? 1.16 is the most popular by far, I would say. Um, still. Um, and yeah, he once got a very like an amazing run where he just randomly found the monuments and then boated around and at some point randomly found the stronghold, which was hilarious. <laughs> it was one of the most epic speedruns that ever existed in Minecraft. And yeah, he also was very good at routing and generally at Minecraft. And there's one route named after him. Um, and I think Ava just performed that route in the tourney. If uh, I didn't miss anything crucial. I have to say 1.16 is not the version that I'm most familiar with. But at this point, I've commentated so many tourneys that, you know, some things I, I I recognize. Oh yeah, the wither skeleton in the mix here. The blazes shooting their fireballs, but we've got some fire resistance, so it is not a big deal. Able to dodge the wither skeleton attacks and deal with it. Okay, actually we are okay, no, we're good, we're good. I thought for a second we weren't on fire res. <laughs> Have a flashback to right. uh, some of my Minecraft adventures where I just don't use fire res like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Um Anyways, <laughs> there's a <laughs> there's a thing pop quiz for you, Saren. Maybe for chat. I was using a sword that she got from the Rune Portal while killing the Blazes. You might, do you have an idea why she might be using a sword? I I do. I was wondering if I almost brought it up, but every time I bring it up, it's always like some really stupid enchantment, like Bane of Anthropods or something dumb. So I didn't even bring it up, but I guess I'm guessing it's a looting sword. Ready, man. It is looting a too. looting sword. It is the most powerful looting sword that you can get in the game. It is looting three. Uh, that was in the ruined portal. There's a very, very tiny chance for that uh, to happen. And I wonder why that happens in the seed again. So many, so many things happening in these seeds. Like, I don't know how is that possible. I'm thinking these this tournament's are just rigged. So lucky. Yeah, Whoever said rigged. this tournament is <laughs> definitely writing the scripts. Yeah, it's uh, basically for those of you who don't know what does what this enchantment does. Um, normally, blazes like to drop one rod, but with this ward, there's a chance for blazes to drop more. Like, I don't know what the exact number is. I haven't looked at the looting table in a while, but I think they can uh, give you three rods uh, after one death. That's insane. Also, I noticed that Tino is building their second portal, and I was not that far behind. I think she catched up. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, playing pretty solidly here. Obviously, they both have the same uh, benefits from the... Wait, does Tino not have the looting sword? 
Or did he drop Tina it? He does have the looting sword. Maybe okay. he just didn't look at it. Like I didn't catch whether he used it or not. Here. Yeah, me neither. So many things happen, especially in Minecraft speedrunning. Like there's so many structures, so many things that happens at the same time. You're gonna miss so many things uh, when you're commentating these matches, and then there's chat flaming you, which is like the usual thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I was digging into the wall. I think she, she. Oh, there we go. There's Ninja Bot uh, on her screen. That's the calculator that people use in 1.16, made by Ninja Brain, a dude that is a ninja and also has a huge brain. Um, <laughs> also very good speed on her. By the way, thanks for the subscription. Um, I think this is the second subscription today. Yeah, man, is kind of a god gamer. Okay, a little bit of pause buffering here to dodge the arrows of the skeletons. Two skeletons in the hole. This is a scary situation. Oh my goodness. Able to get out oh and God. dig down, make a little bit of a panic shelter. Probably should eat up before we dig down. I'm just going to call that one out. Yeah, talking about looting, by the way, there was one world record in 1.15, the category that we had before, that featured a looting swords. Um, and that record stood for so long until... A fellow speedrunner um, under the name Corbanos broke it with classic strats. And ever since, looting swords have been memes in tournaments and in race and in RC runs. But if you get it in 1.16 uh, from a rune portal, they're like just so good. They they basically can reduce your your nether splits to. Oh, and I, know, I was into the stronghold here. So a little bit of a uh, lead swap. <laughs> I'm actually making up a lot of ground right now. This is actually crazy. Yeah, Ava is so underrated. Um, she, I think she doesn't have that good of a PC. She has to play with one instance. She cannot uh, reset with multiple instances. She's using Royal Preview. I was, I was looking a little bit. Uh, I was watching her stream uh, today early a bit. And for, for example, I reset with three instances. So I can uh, generate three times the amount of words that she generates in an hour. And uh, Tino as well. I think Tino also plays only with one instance. And even with playing with one instance, that gives you that much of a disadvantage competitively. Both of them managed to get a 16 and a 15, 21 and 1.16, which is amazing. Yeah, I, I could I could definitely respect that. I mean, single instance doesn't seem like that big of a, uh, you know, downgrade, but when you're sitting there and you have to reload the world and watch the screen every time, meanwhile, people can just kind of like flick through worlds, find one they like. It, it is definitely a massive advantage um, as both players entering the end here pretty much neck and neck. We've got some extremely nice and peaceful music here to uh, accompany our end fight. We will be looking for just a, a wait here from Awa, Tino. I don't think having a bow either. So both players probably going to go for a weight strat here. And a bit of frames missing by Tino again. Uh, surely this is not going to uh, change uh, the the uh, result of this game at all. And if it does, you know, this is a friendly match. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. we, featured, <laughs> we featured all of the three 80% categories today. And teased a bit the tournament that's going to happen on Saturday. Um... So, which was the main goal. And, yeah. We will see. One hour and four minutes. Very, very good time. Uh, Ava, is she getting a perch already? Oh, no. This was, that was a debate, right? Fake perch. Oh, we go. Yeah, it is all up to RNG for now. There is the force perch mechanic that is going to come into effect at some point. I think it was three minutes. Um, So, you know. If it comes down to that, Awa having a little bit of an advantage with the earlier end entry, but Tino could still luck out with the faster perch. Yeah, on Awa's side, we see Jabates in the ends. On Tino's side, with a little bit of entropy action going on. Lots of frames oh. missing. Oh, we see a perch! Just needs to clutch out the 18 bed here. I, I can't see how many beds there are, but I saw at least like six, so it should be okay as Tino's able to clutch it out. Take the victory here for Team Latum. Very big deal. Bit of an underdog Tino story. Getting the victory. Unexpected, to be honest. But at the end, this was so close. Congratulations for them. They get a 105.30 on 
on the dots. Very, very nice. Obviously, we're gonna respect uh, Ava here and see if she can also clutch the end fight. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, Sarah, do you want me to ask the runners if they want to join for an interview? Yeah, whatever you, whatever you want to do, ready is good with me. All right, so while I set this up, uh, feel free to uh, yeah commentate this amazing end fight by Ava de Fructus. Oh man, I will talk so much about the end fight. Uh, we are waiting for the dragon, and while we're waiting for the dragon, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our uh, fantastic partner, Arity, the Urban Arts. We are basically, I mean, this isn't really supposed to be the kickoff event. This is supposed to be like the uh, the hype event for the um, the tournament on Saturday, but we're still gonna bring it up because we haven't quite started our spring fundraiser yet for Urban Arts. But I want to kind of give a little bit of a teaser. We're gonna be running a bunch of showcase events. Um, not only this one, but we also have a ton of events coming up to be announced. We've got some Zelda, we've got some Minecraft, we've got some Mario, all sorts of Mario flavors in the mix. Some other random games thrown in there as well, so uh, if variety is your cup of tea, if you like to see all sorts of different speedruns, definitely follow the channel. Um, you can use exclamation point donate anytime over the next course of April, May, um, anytime that is still spring, we'll be running this fundraiser. Trying to raise some money to help Urban Arts uh, equip their student media lab with the tools they need to send students to college, particularly minorities, people in the LGBT community, uh, people who are you know underserved in their communities, people who don't have quite as much financial support as others, the opportunities others have. So if you like helping uh, get the playing field a little bit more even for everybody, definitely drop a follow, drop some donations. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready to see some interesting stuff going on. I mean, we got some tournaments on deck too. Uh, that's kind of what we're known for, but trying to get some showcases rocking is it was having the worst luck on this end fight. I wasn't expecting to have to talk that long about urban arts. I could talk about urban arts longer, but, um, I'm expecting this perch to come in. I think this is the force perch at this point as, uh, yes. it's been quite a bit of time. Oh, not the best first bet. This is gonna get into the rhythm again using a strategy called pick block. And I think this will be enough. And there it is. Second place goes to Team Europe. Ava de Fructus managing to beat the dragon. She got rolled. Unfortunately, this is gonna give Team uh, Latin America the victory. Thanks for the racers to participating, for participating. And... Uh, they said that they all will agree to an interview, so we will have them very, very soon in the commentary booth. That is beautiful. All right, dragging them in now. Hello and welcome, runners. Uh, Hi. Um, Hello, what's going on? Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having you uh, with us today in this exhibition match. Uh, congratulations for Team Latam. I believe there were some frames missing, but on the stream, <laughs> Latam, Latam won. Ava also got rolled from the perch. She got the fourth perch at four minutes. So that was kind of sad. But yeah, all of you played very well. Um, congratulations to all of you. And thanks again for, for playing today, for showcasing this to CCG and teasing a bit the... Uh, the tournaments on Saturday. Um, yeah, maybe uh, what uh, are your thoughts about the seeds? What did you think about uh, 1.7, for instance? Boscar, maybe you want to start. Yeah, uh, well, the seed was quite nice. Uh, everything was like very close and I think I got a very good time. Uh, yeah, I think I did pretty well. I got I got out of dinner pretty early, but I didn't I didn't know like the time because the timer didn't show up for some reason. But yeah, I think I did quite nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anything particular about the seed? I think it was pretty straightforward with the pyramid and uh, the animals. Yeah, right? yeah, it was pretty easy. Nice. And uh, Team Latam, um, the other team. Uh, what were your thoughts about one point seven? So I think, uh, <clears throat> like you said, the seed was pretty straightforward. Uh, I liked it uh, because that, that's the kind of seed that I was practicing for uh, because, well, I 
haven't opened Minecraft 1.7 like in three months, kind of. So I think uh, a 22 I did was pretty good, but yeah, that's it, I guess. Yeah, it was amazing. You, I have to say, I did not expect you to beat Boscar on 1.7 by that much. I think Boscar didn't have a bow, so you had to look for a library and that give you a huge advantage as well. But yeah, oh. yeah congratulations to you um, for beating Boscar in 1.7. Uh, that was a surprise, I have to say. Boscar still got, I think, a 25-minute run. All right. Well, yeah, but still, I like the the spawn rates of the enemies were like pretty bad. Like, I had to spend all night just to get like 15 pearls. Yeah, I think I lived like um 16 minutes ish. Uh, no, I left at, at daytime because the spawn rates were were super bad. Mm. Well, but yeah, congrats. Congratulations, GG, to both of you. Then we had 1.14, Sergiete versus Tukara. Uh, both of them played good, but Sergiete, um, you went to the pyramid later, and therefore you didn't see the enchanted golden notch apple. Yeah, uh, I, I so... forgot. I forgot about the temple. I was going to <laughs> blow up the trees, and I didn't see TNT on in my inventory. <laughs> and also, I got like 22 pearls. Why wouldn't you say that it was a six eye? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not supposed to say that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Kara, Kara also got like I think it was 19 pearls or or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, better that way than the other way, right? It wouldn't be. It would have been very sad if you were one eye short. I think, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, Tukara, what uh, were your thoughts about uh, 1.14? Did you like the seat? Yeah, I really like the seal. Um, my Minecraft was like very laggy, and I have to play like a, like a four chunks or something like like that. Um, but I really like the seal. Cool. Um, yeah, GG's to both of you as well. And uh, finally, um, Tino, maybe uh, my my favorite seat tester. Don't tell this to anyone. Uh, okay. What do you say? How how do you how do you grade the seed? Was it a good seed? What did I do wrong this time? Uh, no, I would rate that as a really good seed. Actually, um, I didn't play it like really good. I, I just I just kind of went straight forward for the places that I had to go and didn't look around, and that uh, was that ended up making me making me lose a lot of time choosing uh, the worst route to get to places probably. Um, like not looking around for the fortress and just going for the only um, and another fortress block that I saw. Um, yeah, that made me lose a lot, that made me lose a lot of time. Uh, you know, one thing yeah, that it was really scuffed for me. Did you see the, the looting the beginning, three, right? The, the looting three swords. Did you see it? Yes, I did. I, yeah, right. he did, did see it, I, I did uh, and one, we were saying but like... I, I forgot about it until like the middle of my... Yeah, I saw it, but I forgot about it until I was like in the middle of my blaze fight, and I remembered, oh, fuck, I have a, I have a looting tree. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, was For the difference. For what am I killing them? So, but luckily, luckily I remember at least. Yeah, that, that made the difference because, uh, Team Europe, uh, Ava, she had to start later because, uh, yeah, you were ahead, so she already was on a three minute disadvantage. But she played so, so well against the Blazes, and I think she was a little bit faster routing the, the Bastion. That, uh, yeah, she was able to catch up, and both of you ended in the stronghold at the same time. And then basically, she got rolled uh, from the dragon, and you got, a, oh, you got a good perch, I would say. Ava, what were your thoughts about the seed? Did you like it? I really like the seed. I think I played it um, well. I drew like the best pro of my life from the Bastion to the play spawner. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, but yeah, the only thing I, I feel like I played bad was not hitting the stronghold in the second portal. I think that made me lose a lot of valuable time. That could have definitely helped a lot at the end. Because I lost like one minute searching for the place to dig down. But apart from that, I think I played the seed really well. And also uh, at the start, I kind of couldn't find the cheap wreck, even though it was literally right there. But, yeah, but 
yeah, I, I think I played really well, and I really like the seed. A really good seed. Cool. Yeah, I saw you doing a little bit of mapless, and at the end you find the shipwreck. That was pretty cool. Uh, I have to say, we couldn't feature everything. You guys played with so many strategies, and you did so many cool stuff. Um, I want to say again, I appreciate you all for showcasing today and taking your time to uh, uh, showcase to uh, this uh, more of a Mario speedrunning crowd at this point, uh, what Minecraft speedrunning is. Saturday again, there's going to be this tournament with uh, all this very strong combined uh, Speedrunners, one of them is Boscar, for example, who has a uh, sub hour combines. And yeah, uh, thanks again for playing today, especially for those of you who live in Europe. Ava, Boscar, and Sergieta, I know it's very late for you at this point. It's 11 p.m. Thank you so much for playing. Also, Team Latam um, for playing today. Yeah, Chad, give them a follow. Shout out to them. Thanks for, for showing us what Minecraft speedrunning is. And I don't know, Saren, is there anything that you want to add? Yeah, all I want to say is this weekend's going to be hype. It's going to be crazy. The tournament's going to be dope. And if you like Minecraft speedrunning and you haven't already followed, definitely follow the channel because we've got a lot more tournaments and showcases coming up.